Okay, hey, I think we're live. Welcome to the stream. So if you're watching a replay, I'm going to just wait for people to get on and then we will get into it. I was curious to see the state of Flutter in this day and age. I haven't looked at Flutter in a while. So let's see what we got here. Montreal, Quebec. Let's go uh, New York. New York City. Uh, uh, all right, Flutter job. Flutter engineer. Uh, 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 full stack estates. Anybody there? Yeah, if you're there, say hello from wherever you happen to be in the world in the chat. Let me know. I always find that interesting. Oh, let's get this down just a little bit. All right, that's good. All right, so 15 people. All right, we're starting to load up here. I'm just checking out some stuff. Uh, that's interesting. Flutter. Dart. Let's see what Dart does. All right. What Dart? Dart. Uh, senior Associate Audience Intelligence Insight Account Manager. Hmm. I'm just actually looking up jobs, Flutter developer. How's that? Go in there. Find jobs. Flutter engineer, iOS developer, web developer, mobile application developer, iOS and oh, I should show you, show you what I'm doing here. So I've been checking indeed.com. I'm looking at Flutter development work. So New York, New York, uh, Flutter engineer, well, will be responsible for developing and designing mobile architectures architecture and flutter ensuring responsiveness of mobile application working alongside huh. so we can see there are flutter jobs or flutter 31 that's in new york let me see california Let's see what happens you find jobs flutter developer 59 jobs so they are there there are jobs available today uh Full stack developer, React Native, experience is a plus, experience UI UX. That's interesting. So the salaries are pretty good. Hey, hope everybody is well. Let's go back. I decided after a long hiatus to take a look at what's going on in the Flutter sphere. Uh, what are Flutter and Dart? We'll get into that in uh, a second. I just want to wait for about 70 people to join on. I'm going to explain to you what Flutter and Dart are. We're going to go to the official pages, take a look around. This is just a quick overview if you're looking for a tutorial. This is not a tutorial on Dart, although I will peek a little bit at the programming language that Dart uses, something that Dart, that Flutter uses, something called Dart, which is, uh, these are both Google products uh, put out specifically to create um, cross-platform solutions with one code base. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I am actually wondering why there are not more thumbs for you this evening, Stefan. It's a mystery of my life. It's a mystery of my life, Mr. Teeter. What can we do? Um, yeah, there's 32. You should come in. You should just instinctively give me a thumbs up. Or if you hate me, give me two, two thumbs down. Two thumbs down. If, all right. So let's, um, let's see what see Orlando has to say. Uh, we'll increase the size of this. There we go. Flutter will, Flutter will VE a success only with a good web desktop support. Perhaps, perhaps. Web dev is dead. Wix gonna rule the world. Hello, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Hello from Pure Paraguay. Thanks for the thumbs up, people. I know some of you are having trouble with your fingers. It's hard to press that thumb finger. I, can, I understand. It's very difficult. You've been clicking all day. It's hard. I can, I can get that. Um, all right. Hello from Nepal. Wow. Very cool. Uh, all right, Chad. Stefan, just bought your freelance course. Should we use wireframes when planning websites? Yes. How much time should we give yourself research for a project if I have not done it before? You should do the um, get back to me with that questions after you've done the the freelance course. I've, it's it's mapped out in there. 
wireframe it very quickly just on paper uh, and then ship it off to the guy very quickly. You don't want to do very much work before you get any payment and confirmation about you're going to get paid. I hate you so much I gave you four thumbs up. <laughs> I'm calculating that. Uh, hello from Kuwait. Very cool, very cool. All right, so um, oh, thanks for picking up my course, by the way. I know you will enjoy it. Everybody seems to like that course, so. Um, Paraguay, wow, well, wow. Well, Colombia, Pennsylvania. Good evening, Calgary, a fellow Canadian. Queens, Florida, good old Florida. Coventry, UK, Arizona. You're up late, man. Coventry, UK. Virginia, all right, cool. We got a, okay, 39, small group, intimate group. So we will uh, jump into a few things. So um, let me just jump into my screen here. So I was just checking out job opportunities or Flutter developer, and you see they're, they're out there. They're out there. Flutter Mobile, okay, this is no good. This guy you gotta ignore. See, look at this guy. This guy is crazy. He's, you got, that's why you gotta shop around. Flutter Android, 15, 26 hours, pathetic. Then right next, right next to him, you got a guy offering 135,000 a year. So, you know. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, we're looking for a mobile app developer who's expert in building apps for Android iOS development, preferably with Flutter. There you go, 135K. So uh, don't ever let anybody say Flutter jobs don't pay. They pay. All right, so let's get into it. So what's Flutter? Flutter is a, a, uh, a product. I guess you call it a framework. It's a framework that um, Google put out. Uh, that allows you to use one code base to create, um, uh, I'll well, so just read it here, Google, Flutter is Google's UI toolkit for building beautiful and natively compiled applications for mobile, web, and desktop from a single code base. So there you go, that's pretty simple. There's videos that talk about it. Um, Dart is the framework, and you use the, excuse me, Flutter is the framework, Flutter is the framework, and you use Dart of a programming language. And Dart was a programming language designed by Google, apparently specifically optimized for UI. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not a programmer each, in each, but when I did look at it initially, when it first came out, I really liked it and I recommended it. So, uh, yeah, so here's some code here. Uh, this is, of course, Dart code, and you can run it right in the browser. Let it compile. I think it's good. I took a look at this just a, a few seconds ago. There we go. So you click. That's pretty good. So that little bit of code here produces that. Uh, yeah, so it's a C language. It's not C language. It's C family of languages. And I've never looked at Dart code before. So I'm looking at it with you. Uh, so it's very, you know, it's very reminds me of, of a Java in many respects. So it's the import. You're importing packages. So. What's that? All you do is you bring in external code uh, so that you can leverage in your own code. So this is the main uh, method um, in Java, in uh, C Sharp, um, and other languages, and apparently Dart, you have a main method, which is basically uh, the first place the program goes to to start your program. So I, anyway, why am I talking about this? I'm trying to show you guys that once you learn one programming language, you have a, you, get, you start getting a handle on many programming languages. So though I've never looked at Dart before, I understand at least the basics of what's going on. So I understand what the main function is, right? Uh, I think, I think it, I would assume this is a synchronous method, uh, meaning that you can, you can run uh, many, many instances of this class at the same time. It's good for speed. Uh, so then you have classes, so you have a class. You know, just name it a class. Extends, that's a keyword used in Java as well. I believe it's used in C Sharp in a while. And this is the, uh, uh, this is the, the class that it, it extends. Extends basically this class here, which is a chunk of code, is built off on top of this class. Why do you do that? So that you can leverage the code that's in here. So anyway, so you got the class. Uh, so here's a, a, a method. So void, again, this is something you see in other languages. Void mean it doesn't return anything. If you don't understand this, go do some of my co-courses. It's just, it's just, 
anyway, I won't get into it here. But anyway, so it's pretty. So you see, you got uh, it's it's pretty easy to understand uh, code here. So this is what you're using to build your widget, which is builds this little arrow thing. So when you click on it, and so it's got a transition, just like CSS has transitions like this. So you you call a transition a function, and you tell it what to do. Uh, so there you go, font weight, font size. Okay, pretty cool. So spinning Flutter, they also have uh, other Flutter code in here. It's a counter a counter widget. We run it. Okay, boom, 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 boom. Okay, so that's pretty good, pretty fast. So fast development, expressive UIs, et cetera, et cetera, near performance. So once you know your basics in code, you could probably just come to the flutter.dev site here. You know what? I'm sorry. I'm not showing you what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, boy, I was doing all that stuff. My apologies, guys. Okay, so I was just looking at this. They gave you a bit of sample of flutter code in here. I'll just really quickly. I wanted to show us that... Uh, because Dart, this is the language Dart, um, right in here. Because Dart is, is is based is from the C family of languages. I know that because of some of the keywords in here and the use of brackets and so forth. Even though I've never looked at Dart before, because I've done Java, C sharp, and several other languages, I see a lot of similarities here. So I know maybe seventy five percent what's going on here. Even though I've never looked at this before. So import. You have this import uh, in many languages. A package is just a chunk of code. You create a class. A class is just a chunk of code. The extends keyword, you see this in Java. Uh, I think you see this in uh, C Sharp as well in other languages, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I won't go over it again. And what this does, this creates this counter widget here. Boom, 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 boom. That's not very impressive. I like the spinning flutter thing. So this code uh, inserts an image. Let me just run it, and uh, if you click it, it spins around. It's cool. So you got uh, examples right here for you. Very cool. So that's uh, let's jump into Dart. So here's the language that Flutter is using, something called Dart. Uh, this is uh, a language that was uh, created by Google, optimized for UI. Basically, you write your code in Dart within the Flutter framework. And then you can output to different uh, iOS and uh, Windows and uh, Android, et cetera, et cetera. Very cool, very interesting. I just wanted to take a quick look around. You can see uh, here's another way you can, another place you can run code. Hello world. This is you know pretty basic stuff. Hi lizards. And you run it. It says hi. Boom. Okay, come on. Hi lizards. What else do we got here? We got functions, so it shows you uh, examples of functions again. Again, if you know anything about Python or JavaScript or Java, this is, a lot of this is going to look pretty, um, pretty knowable, right? And again, I keep emphasizing this because one of the lessons I try to teach on YouTube is that getting worried about which language you learn is not. It's, it's kind of an artificial fear. Because if you know how to program, you can pivot from one language to the next, like a, a for loop. You know, it's pretty much the same in JavaScript and Java and uh, Python and not Python. Well, maybe Python. I forget now Python. In uh, JavaScript, you get your main function again, your print statements. Uh, this is a strongly typed language, apparently Dart, meaning you have to declare the uh, the variable type, what kind of information it contains. You can have integers, which are numbers. You can have strings of text. You would have, you would put in string here if this was a string, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So you can test out all kinds of different things. You got uh, flow control, uh, if else statements. Again, very, very similar, very, very similar. Different types of lists. So that's pretty cool. So you got a lot of good support here. That's a very one of the things you got to look for when you're looking at a new technology. You want to make sure that you have a good support behind it. Now, since Google is behind Flutter and Dart, you would imagine it has good, good support, but good documentations. And uh, if you go, you got try Dart. I uh, let's let's go to get 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 the docs. See, you got samples of tutorials, code labs, very you know, hello world, breaks it all down, variables. See, it's all there for you. So if you know how to be, if you are a programmer. You don't, you don't need to get a course on Dart. I think you could just, you know, boom, boom, come here and start writing the code out, learning things. You got code labs. You got 
I see exactly. So you got all kinds of different tools. All the instructionals are here for you once you get past the basics. If you're new to code, if you're new, my God, I did it again, sorry. <laughs> if you're new to code, uh, this stuff will be very daunting for you. But if you're not new to code, you can just go in here and you can access, you got all kinds of tutorials, code labs, you get language samples. Let's go to tutorials. Uh, tutorials, here we go. The basics, try the code lab. Uh, Interpose collections, everything you need. So if you know your way around programming, um, you'll be good. You'll be able to do all kinds of stuff here, getting started. Play with Dart in the Dart pad. So you can write, write your code, install Dart, tells you how to do everything with homebrew. Pretty simple stuff, nothing crazy. So that's uh, one of the things I wanted to look at is the community. It's always good to look at the community, see uh, how things are going there. Do we have, let's join the conversation. Join the conversation, Google Groups. Uh, general discussions, let's see what happens. All right, come on, loading, loading. All right, so, okay, let's look at, uh, okay, so this Google group, it may not be the place to go, but it's not, not too much, not too much activity here. Uh, January 25th, well, maybe a little bit more. But it looks like you get support, but not too much activity, not too much activity. Okay, so uh, Flutter jobs, what's it about Flutter, community? Uh, GitHub, Google Groups, subscribe, ask questions. Well, let's see what happens. Check it out. These are all the things I look for when I'm looking at new technologies. I'm checking out to see what's going on. So, okay, we got a few questions today, a few yesterday. So it's fairly uh, active. There might be might be there might be much more active groups elsewhere on Reddit or something. I don't know. But uh, there you go. Just a quick look at uh, Flutter. I wanted to show you what, just give you a quick overview. If you have any questions, again, I'm not a Flutter programmer. I just wanted to look at it. Um, it looks pretty busy. It looks pretty busy. I like it. It looks like it's well supported. If I recall, Google uses Flutter for their own, um, their main app that sells ads. At the end of the day, Google's money may, is made by doing classified ads, right? So yeah, that's what it is. All right, let's see what the questions are and then we'll, uh, how are we doing for time? 18 minutes already, wow, time flies. All right, so let's go in here. Good evening in Calgary, Queens, Queens. Let's go down, let's go down. Nigeria, Morocco, since everyone is saying country, hi from Bosnia, Herx, I, I can never say it, Herz, Govina, Govina. Thanks for joining. Sorry, Puerto Rico. KL Dude said he started using Flutter last year. So tell us what you think of Flutter. Let us know. Can't see the screen. Yeah, my apologies for that, guys. I was uh, Flutter and fart sounds right. Uh, boy, can't see your screen, Seth. Uh, no, my apologies. Sorry about that, guys. Oof. What the hell is a Flutter or a Dart? Flutter is uh, well. We'll activate the screen again. So Flutter is a framework, a library, a GUI toolkit that allows you to create with one code base applications for mobile, web, and desktop for many uh, different platforms. iOS, Android, uh, no, going from, excuse me. So it, from Windows, for Windows, for iOS, uh, for Android. So it's very, very cool. Um, and so Flutter is the framework and uh, Dart, that's not Dart, and Dart is the programming language. Uh, so yeah, I showed that earlier. There you go. It's one of the cross-platform solutions that are out there for you guys. Uh, what is the best ID for Python in WebStack? Either PyCharm or Visual Studio Code. Uh, maybe Matthew could chime in on that one. Uh, yeah, sorry about that, guys. I've been, uh, I have been. should have had another coffee before I got on. Yeah, it's almost Java, so similar. Exactly, exactly. 
Again, the main reason I'm showing you this, A, to show you a cross-platform, one of the options you have there, Flutter Dart. There's other things like PWA, there's the React Native, etc. Xamarin, I think, is another one, uh, besides the native solutions. Um, but one of the things I want to express is that I'm trying to I'm trying to take away the fear that people have vis-a-vis -vis choosing the wrong language. Not possible. Somebody who knows Java looks at that and says, it's very similar to Java, which is very similar to C-sharp. No big deal. What are your thoughts on SAS and SCSS? Love the foundations course. Ah, good, good, good. Uh, yeah, you could use it. I, I think it's uh, SAS is overly, uh, we use it, I, you know, yeah, sure, it's good. I don't think it's uh, super necessary. I consider the need to nerd tech. Yeah. I started learning Flutter recently. While I'm good at with Dart and functionality, I wish I could use CSS for layouts and styles. Ah, there you go. That's interesting to know. I created six apps with it so far. It's great, but it's still lacking a lot of things, especially when it comes to platform APIs. Ah, there you go. It's nothing like getting news from the actual people. GG, I like Flutter because I don't have to write CSS and HTML. <laughs> Good old Matthew. But you're great at drinking beer, apparently. How do you feel about mixing logic and layout style together? Not a good thing. I come from the web, so CSS is like heaven for me. Yeah, you don't want to mix layout and styling. Uh, layout, styling together. Mixing logic. You don't want to mix logic with your styling. You want to keep that separate. That's a basic rule uh, of uh, software development. Is Android better path than iOS dev? Just look at the local jobs, man. How they sought it. Google is known as a project killer. This is the only downside. That, it could happen. It could happen. I couldn't say for sure. Uh, well, I mainly work with Angular, and I know what you are saying. Splitting the files like Angular does it does its great and better. Having logic and style is not the best. Having lot having logic and, and style is not the best. But I like the structure of Flutter. Uh, so you, I guess people, people are suggesting that there's logic in the uh, with the UI in Flutter, uh, perhaps. Learn React Native and Flutter properly. I am currently doing it. You will get confidence. There you go. So there's a conversation going here. Rand says, put some thumbs. Yeah, give me some thumbs. Come on, guys. I know I didn't show the screen, but you can get some thumbs. <laughs> Uh, Project Killer on Flutter, I don't think so. It's open source, so if they even kill the community, they can keep working on it, and I'm pretty sure Google won't kill. They have planned for it with Fusia OS. It could be. I think since they use it, I heard that they were using Flutter for their own uh, AdWords, and that to me is like, huge. That's because that's their moneymaker. Uh, so they don't, they would not implement technology on their moneymaker unless, you know, they were pretty confident about it. And then back, yeah, there's lots of different understand to Van, it's harder to understand the native, I suppose. I heard very good things about it, uh, but I, I cannot argue because I have not looked at it. I haven't used it in, in any way, meaningfully. Xamarin is so new, it barely has a community. What's going on here? Oh boy, we might have some stream problems again. How are we doing in 25 minutes? Uh, Clark, hey, thanks for joining. CSS makes people want to quit the web job. <laughs> yeah, CSS, CSS, you got to get your head wrapped around uh, selector types, uh, the cascade, and layout. If you do those things, uh, Bob's your uncle. What's your view on Elm Lang? I haven't looked at it. I'll look at it in a future stream. Hello, Mr. Madam the Queen. I hope everything is good. Thanks, appreciate it. Uh, there was many, many years, that, there was a time many, many years ago that I would have been considered an expert in beer drinking, but that was long ago. <laughs> uh, it happens, you don't practice, you lose it. You, you don't use it, you lose it. You can separate UI and logic and Flutter using different state managements. There you go, thanks, Ray. See, I don't pretend to be a Flutter expert. I just want to do a quick look and show you how it's so similar to like Java and other languages that don't be worried about learning the wrong language. It does not exist. I built an amazing app with Flutter and connected to Laravel, cool. I built everything by myself. Uh, it worked 
it, it worked three engineers at least. I did it myself alone because Flutter made it easy. Ah, there you go. Cool. That's the whole point of these frameworks, right? That's the whole point of these frameworks. And it's cross-platform. Is there some buffering from the time? Is that on your end? There is buffering. I'm not it's my end. There's something about the India that's been going on. I think it's because of uh, COVID. I haven't gotten around to uh, contacting my, um, my internet provider. I got super high powerful internet. My internet is massive, massive. But I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I'm sorry guys, that's something on my end. My internet's supposed to be massive, but it's not. Uh, me too, got stuck on my comment a minute ago. Hmm, is the stream dead? Interesting, internet down again, my internet is so bad I can hardly tell. So can you guys, can you still hear? I don't know. Can you guys still hear me? Uh, I don't know. All right. I don't know what's going on. What's going on? Yeah, I'm using the right Wi Fi. Uh, just use Bootstrap. Yeah, okay, good, good, good. Sorry about that. The COVID, you know, I never used to have this problem before. COVID. Will WebAssembly replace JavaScript one day? I don't think so. Uh, good audio when streaming. Uh, are we coming back? Are we coming back? I hope so. How are we doing for time? All right, good, good. All right, so that's it. Any other questions? I don't know if you guys can hear me or not. Sorry. So that's it. I wanted to take a look, a, a, a quick look. It looks like Dart. It looks like many other languages that we know out there. It looks like we got good got documentation. It's not bad. It's not bad. Um, yeah, I just wonder why we're at it. I'm a big fan of Schwelte. Easy for rookies. I guess you can hear me. I suppose you guys can hear me. I hope. I hope. So let me just jump into something unrelated just very quickly because I thought it was very amusing. Ah, yes. GME. Uh, so you've heard about this GME thing. Uh, the meme stock war continues. So let's see what's going on here. Come on. GME is GME, it's GameStop, spikes again just ahead of its open, hits new pre-market high. There we go. So I don't know if you guys have been watching this stuff. So basically, um, <laughs> so basically uh, a bunch of Redditors are going after some Wall Streeters, doing what just the Wall Streeters have been doing for the longest time. In, 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 you know, except the Wall Streeters are, you know, the billionaires. Now uh, you got, I don't know how many, apparently there's 2 million Redditors on the, on the trading, uh, in the trading group. Anyway, long story short, they've been going after these Wall Streeters and making them pay. Now the Wall Streeters are crying like little babies because, oh, okay, how could they do this to us? And let's make it clear. As far as I understand, what the Redditors are doing is not illegal. It is not illegal. It is not hacking. It's not illegal. Everything they're doing is just what the hedge funds do. They just don't like it being done to them, I get. All right, enough of that. Let's answer a few more questions and I'll head out. I use both Flutter and React Native. Flutter is far superior, except that widgets do not automatically use native UI elements. Seems almost Android-centric, but it's still great. So there you go. Steph, I don't have any coding skills, but I have experience building and maintaining WordPress sites. Well, I would learn a little bit of coding for you. Check out the link below, do my full stack course, and uh, that combined with your uh, WordPress maintenance, you'd be able to supercharge your, your money-making abilities. All right, yes, yes. So we have, uh, you know, there's a big snowstorm happening. So I don't know if how many people can still hear me. The buffering is worth good audio, good audio when streaming. Hmm. I don't know. So if you guys can hear me, uh, uh, you turned down resolution, it got better. Hmm. Okay. All right, guys. Sorry about the headaches with the streaming. It's out of my control right now. I'm, I just haven't gotten around to it. I got to call up my provider and see if it's something on my end. Could be. Uh, and then... <laughs> Oh boy. Hi, Stefan. Any advice on blue light glasses? I'm looking for decent quality equivalent price 
Oh, so are they worth it? I don't know what blue light glasses... Oh, to help with your eyes. I don't know. Um, cold during the day. And that would help that problem. Uh, we we have a huge delay, but no worries. By the way, I like so much the way you designed the web designer course. Ah, great, Andreas. I'm glad you like the course. I appreciate it. Uh, when you go to market with anything, when you you try to bring something new, you try to bring something different. That's what I tried to do with my uh, with my courses. So I appreciate that. Thank you. My internet has COVID. <laughs> Good vibes. Yes, 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 yes. Ah, yes, the meme stock. Exactly, the meme stock. That's what's going on with that. Uh, it's crazy to watch. What's, the thing that it's really, I'm not surprised, but I'm very disappointed. The whole thing, what they are doing, the meme stock people, the Reddit people, what they are doing, as far as I know, I'm 99% sure of this, though I'm not a lawyer, is 100% illegal. They're just saying, hey, this is a good opportunity. Let's buy. That's it. They're, the shorts are heavily shorting this thing. Let's do it. Hedge funds have been doing this kind of stuff for years and years and decades. And now you see these guys come on TV and they're crying. They're crying. They're like babies. I can't believe what I saw. I was, oh, come on, guys. Come on. This is what you guys do. So you got a million Redditors coming in there. Uh, it's the market. You know, grow up. So I don't know. So now, because now they're going on TV, apparently, and they're, they're crying, but somehow it's somehow nefarious. What, what is, what's what they do? <laughs> so it is BlackBerry or AMC if it runs next by Reddit. It could be. I'm not offering any stock advice. This stuff is very dangerous. Um, some people will make a lot of money, and some people will make pew, get killed. A lot of people get killed. So uh, do what you will, but... I just want to bring it up because it's noteworthy, um, especially the reaction from the, per the so-called professionals. I'm going to call them wimps. Why then is the subreddit Discord offline? I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that. It's uh, Everything's political now. If I make a Ruby joke, people get angry, you know? So who knows? It's uh, When it comes to big money, though, there's big money, and the big money people don't like losing the big money. So, uh, yes, yeah. Any other questions? Brought the keyboard and mouse. You recommend it and loving it so far. Thanks for recommending it. Oh, yeah. So this, in case you don't know, links below. This is the Logitech mouse. Best mouse I've ever used. I don't know if you can see it. There it is. Come on in, autofocus. Jeez. Anyway, it's the best mouse I ever used. And I used the Logitech uh let me get it out here. Keyboard. Best keyboard I ever used. Highly recommended. Fantastic. Uh, very cool. So I recommend both those uh, devices. Here we go. This is the Logitech mouse. A little dirty. But it never gets, even though I, I don't have to clean it. That's one of the things I love best about it. I don't have to clean it every two days like every other mouse I've ever used in my life. I don't know what black magic they're using. It's pretty dirty under here, but it still glides quite nicely. So yeah, highly recommend. Okay, so, uh, okay, stream is good now. Cool, cool, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's not you. There was an outage today in the whole East Coast affected YouTube. Ah, okay, okay. Now I've been also, in addition, I've been having uh, bandwidth issues. I wasn't sure if it was my router, uh, but my router never gave me problems before. Uh, and I thought maybe it's my internet connection. I have to get a hold of my internet provider to see what's going on with that because I pay uh, pretty good money for my internet, let me tell you. I pay to have uh, big pipes. So I don't know. All right, that's about it. If there's no other questions, no other comments, um, that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much what I got. Uh, new comment. We'll see what's going on here. Uh, no. I used to have a bad provider, must always keep resting it to work properly. Uh, I gave up and changed the provider. Yeah, yeah. Usually I've been using this current provider for a number of years now, and they've been very, very good up until recently. So I'm thinking maybe it's the COVID overload or something. Uh, yeah, I heard that BlackBerry is next. I heard that BlackBerry is next. In fact, I tried to get on today 
and uh, my trading, uh, the bank went down. I was so I was so angry about that. They couldn't get in. They couldn't get in. They're, they're, they've done this twice to me this year where uh, I couldn't get, I couldn't log in. So glad you like the Ruby jokes. What's your impressions of Laravel? I think it's the best MVC framework in the PHP game. And I think it's one of the best frameworks in the world, period, regardless of language. Hi from Venezuela. Hello, how are you? I hope everything is good. They are accusing Redditors that Russia is behind them, laugh out loud. Yeah, I heard about that. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. Russia's behind everything. I put on five pounds yesterday, and it's the Russians. I know it's the Russians because I ate Russian bread. So the Russians did it to me. It's true. Putin. Anyway, do you own any crypto? I used to. I used to, and I used to own machines, uh, uh, Litecoin machines, but we ran them and sold them. We made some money on it, but uh, not now. Have you tried mechanical keyboards? Uh, not recently, no. Imagine making a Ruby app in 2021. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Any stock related to pandemic is going up. Look good. Good food stock is doubled. Wow. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going up right now. But uh, buyer beware, buyer beware. The best advice I can give about the stock market is just hold. You buy stuff that you think are good, hold them for long term, uh, be well diversified. You hold them forever. And if you do that, uh, it's very relaxing. There's one thing I'll emphasize in terms of investment, and that covers my money course. The emotional roller coaster of investing has to be mitigated so that you can play out your thesis. So let's say you have a, a theory that a particular company is going to do real well, really well. And you throw a bunch of money at it, too much money at it, like maybe 50% of your money or 30% of your money. And what happens then, because you got so much money invested in one single equity, one single investment, um, it becomes very nerve wracking for most people. And you can't, and it's hard to f do work during the day or do anything else. And it's also hard to, um, to see out your thesis uh, to the end. And so you might end up selling out before it actually does its main run because stocks don't go up in a straight line typically. They, they go up and they go down, they go up and they go down. So you need to spread out your investments so that um, you're not freaked out whenever your stock may go down. This way you can realize its true uh, end. Now sometimes its true end will be nowhere, but sometimes its true end will be somewhere. So uh, uh, what's going on? I had that mouse. The Logitech G50 Lightspeed is better. <laughs> Maybe it is. Hello from Austria. Hey, how are you? How are you doing? Buy, sell. Buy high, sell low. Stonks. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yeah, that's what he was saying. Yeah, yeah. If you don't know Stonks, that was uh, Elon Musk. He made that tweet. Are you with Bell? I'm with Videotron. I was used to be with Bell, but they kept on giving me trouble. Don't put money you need in a stock market or in that matter, any business. Yeah, pretty much. You got to think of the, the stock market as a long term thing. Hey, Stefan, until when you when will you complete web developer course be on discount? Send me an email. I'll give you a discount code since you're on the stream. Send me an email. I'll give you a discount code. You know what I want to show you guys? I was going to do a dedicated video on it, but since you're here, some of you find interesting. Um, the speed of learning to code when we find the graphic. Somebody sent me a really cool infographic, and I think you'll find it interesting. Hold on. I'm just pulling it out here. Wait a There it is. Here we go. All right. All right. Here, here we go. So, boom. Bam. There we go. So somebody sent me this. Maybe it was one of you. I don't know. And uh, so here we go. Let me get rid of this. You don't need to see me here. Okay. So somebody sent me this a while back. So they were working on my foundations courses, and they actually tracked quite detailed how long it took them to do the courses. So I have my web foundations course, which is the little mini course. It just basically gives you an overview of what's going on. I assume you guys can see this. I'm going to check the notes. Uh, 
And then, uh, yeah, so then the HTML5 foundations, you understand my foundations course, when I teach you HTML5, much more, I teach you much more than just the language. I teach you a whole bunch of other things around the language. So that took her, started on the 5th of June, finished on the 22nd, that took her 11 days. The web foundation took two days, uh, 22 hours of work to, for this individual uh, to finish the uh, HTML5. Then CSS3 took 16 days, 28 hours of work. I'm surprised about that because the CSS course is huge, huge. So they, they really plow through CSS. Then JavaScript, uh, 26 hours of work, uh, several days from 26th to the 5th of August. And then they did the other half from the 8th. Okay, you get that. Then PHP 7, uh, six days of work, uh, 18 hours they spent on it. PHP MySQL, five hours of work. Uh, so a total of 99 hours of work completed over 50 days. When you complete these foundations, you'll be comfortable writing code. So that's just a little, I'm gonna put this up actually uh, as a guide for people. I've seen people complete it in twice the time, three times the time. I've seen people complete it a little bit more quickly. But this gives you an idea how much material there are in just these five uh, uh, basic courses. One, two, three, four, five, six, six courses, excuse me. There's a lot of material, 99 hours of training, 50 days, so that's not bad. Somebody, somebody doesn't like uh, 99 hours of training. Uh, do you have a MySQL course? Yes, I have a basics of MySQL. I'll show you how to, how to uh, execute commands and so on and so forth. Basic stuff, but it will get you there so that you can jump into any direction that you want. Some design patterns are way overrated. Some are just common sense. Am I wrong? Yeah, there's a lot of, um, what should I say? With regards to design patterns, when people discovered design patterns, they started to go crazy. They started inventing all kinds of design patterns, and uh, which were just variations of other design patterns. Now, you should learn, like, the top four or five design patterns, and that's pretty much all you need to know, and you, then you, you're ready to go, you know. Hey, what are the top? MVC, facade, the iterator, um, uh, f filters, I call them filters, but some people call them dependency injection. Um, yeah, those are uh, off the top of my head, the ones that I like the best. I, I always use filters, MVC, and facade. I, that's, I constantly use that over and over and over again when I was actively coding. What framework do you think will replace React in terms of popularity in the near future? I have no clue. I have no clue. It's, uh, my, if anything will do, it will be Vue. If anything will do, it will be Vue. But I don't think React is going away. So, oh, well, I got a super chat. Well, thanks for the super chat. I appreciate it. All right. I'm one third of the way to a coffee. Fantastic. Cool. And I'm not being facetious. I appreciate it, actually. I appreciate the sentiment. you got to tell us more about your JS course. What do you want me to tell you about the JS course? The JS course assumes that you've never written code before. You're not a software developer. Um, it assumes, though, that you know the basics of HTML and CSS. So I assume that you've done my HTML CSS course. And it walks you through all the fundamental constructs of JavaScript, teaches you how to use JavaScript to do common things, um, it's client side, so you learn a lot about DOM scripting, DOM programming. That's the docu document object model. So you learn how to use JavaScript to basically change the web page on the fly. Here's an example where I teach you how to do animation with JavaScript, uh, different types of animations. Um, you come out with a good, solid understanding of JavaScript, and not only JavaScript, but programming. So that's what the JavaScript is course is about. And from there, you'll be very comfortable jumping into all kinds of different directions. Uh, Steph, doing your web dev course, it's great. I appreciate that. Thanks for letting the stream know. Similar style of teach as your Python course. Similar style of, of teach as your Python. Course. Yeah, well, since I created both courses. <laughs> yeah, you'll see in the, in the dev, in the JavaScript, I'll introduce, there's a lot of crossover because languages, there's a lot of crossover across the languages, but I introduce, you know, different things in Python that you don't see in, in JavaScript and, and in PHP, I introduce other things you don't see in the previous two. 
Hello from Indonesia. Hello from I don't know where. I, I think that is a Middle Eastern language, perhaps. And if it is, thanks for joining the stream. My apologies for my ignorance. I don't know what that language is. Uh, Node Express, Node.js Express server versus Python Django. Oh. Depends what you want to do. I always tell people that. Look for the local job opportunities. But if I was going to do web uh, between the two, I'd probably lean towards Node uh, over Python Django. But uh, jobs are ultimately uh, dictate that. Have anything you would recommend for someone that is a software dev? Have anything would you recommend for someone that is a software dev? Yeah, I would recommend the book on refactoring. I usually show it. I don't have it in front of me. I don't know where to put it. Um, if you look in the link below, there's a book on refactoring, and there's another book on design patterns. Get the refactoring book if you're a dev and you want to level up your game. That, of anything else you could do, is going to level up your game the quickest. Get that refactoring book. Um, I did not write that, uh, but that's the one I would get if I were you. And it's one of the few books I've kept from back in my heyday, back in the 90s, uh, 1999, 2000. Hello from Kuwait. Hey, how are you? Tanzania. Wow, cool. Very cool. You know, many years ago, in a previous life, I used to be in a business, and one of the things we did is we import rare fish from all over the world for uh, public zoos, collectors, and aquariums. And we used to deal with um, a company in Tanzania. And we used to buy fish, cichlids, from Lake uh, Tanganyika. Tanganyika, yeah, that's been a while. So there, that's it. So I never bid, though. My partner went down there. I just never bid. All right. Any other questions? Uh, what do we got here? Steph, suggest a good device to back up my dedicated server data. Now we can't always trust uh, AWS for our data. So I'm thinking of getting a home cloud, not big one, maybe eight terabyte or 12 terabyte. How much data do you have on AWS? Do you have that much? Um, if you don't have much data, what you could do is you could create a, uh, a virtual server on, let's say, um, DigitalOcean, and then uh, you can get a droplet for like five bucks a month or something with gigs. And then you can have... Um, your AWS set up a cron that automatically backs up your data from that drop from your AWS to your digital ocean droplet. That might be an option for you as a backup. So um, I, as a general rule, think that having backups on the cloud is safer than in your home because if your home catches fire or if a, two hard drives, hard drives fail, you're screwed. But for a major player like DI, DigitalOcean, or AWS, or Google, or Microsoft, for their um, cloud-based uh, servers to fail, it would be the end of the world, right? That would I, I really doubt that will ever happen. All right, 50 minutes. Ah, Mizoram. Where is that? Hello from Mizoram. I've never heard of that before. Tell me what country in the world that is from. If, uh, would you consider making a course on mobile development or quality assurance for people who are looking for alternatives to web development? Well, not at this point. Uh, right now, I am. Uh, I just finished my Lizard Wizard course, so that's going to be out hopefully this week or early next week. It's done. I just get it mounted onto the store. And my money course. I got my web stack stuff. Um, yeah, quality assurance. Uh, I have... Yeah, yeah, I don't see that happening, but uh, we're looking for alternatives to web development. So you want to do mobile, yeah. I would suggest you do um, my Python course and maybe my JavaScript course because it's going to introduce you um, to programming in general, and then you can uh, take it from there. Uh, did you see the Flutter app performance issues? They happen because investigate wiring up metal binary archives on iOS. Now I have not heard about any of that. Hey, from Nigeria, very cool. 
What's your thoughts on TypeScript? Strongly typed JavaScript. I think it has its place. What's the best thing about getting into IT, into IT as a career? What's the best thing about getting into IT? Well, there's IT and then there's software development. I recommend becoming a software development a software a software developer. Uh, underrated skill: debugging where a problem comes from. Yeah, that's very important. You spend more more time debugging than anything else. Uh, debugging connection string, config files, the sync code. Debugging code is not enough. You've got to make sure the whole environment is okay. Yeah, yeah. Hello, hello. How are we doing for people? All right, good. If you like to stream, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any question, uh, is the refactoring book even if you don't know Java or JavaScript? Yeah, if you're a programmer and you're comfortable writing code, if you're, let's say, a Python coder, it will help quite a bit. It's the concepts about how to um, how to how to take code and make it better, and it's applicable regardless of the language. Um, they happen to have a Java or JavaScript version, but I highly recommend it. Trust me, everybody take gets the book. They go, wow! And it's not my book. Uh, you know, it's not my book. It's just it's a good book. As I said, I if I was training somebody up from scratch, where well, I am, I am gonna do my fundamentals courses. Have them do projects, jump into Python, and then uh, do some, then do some real projects, two or three, and then get the refactoring book, start reading that, and applying those lessons to uh, your code writing, and then learn everything else on a need to nerd basis. The best thing is money. Well, that's why people are doing all this, you know. That's why in my training now, it's, it's coding. It's communication skills and psychology skills. That's going to help you a lot with your career and your jobs. It's finance skills, so you understand how to manage money properly. Uh, some basic rules that really have a huge impact. Uh, so I try to, you know, freelancing skills I provide, entrepreneur. So I'm trying to provide that, that the whole spectrum of skill sets and training you need to get where you want to get. And I think where everybody wants to get to is that eventually. That's what you want, right? So that's what we're going to do. Any thoughts from switching from Scrum to Kaban, Kanban? I don't know. I have no thoughts on that. Sorry, guy. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. All right. Anything else? Are we going to do? Oh, 54 minutes. Okay. We're going to be wrapping up the stream. Unless there's any last minute questions. I hope everybody is well. Uh, take care of yourself. If you're learning to code and you reach a little, you hit some walls, don't worry, it's normal. Remember, anything that's difficult is worth something. It's worth worth learning. Um, learning tips for you, uh, drink water, try to do a little bit every day. If you hit a problem, work on it for a little while, maybe half an hour, 20 minutes. If you can't solve it, then move on to something else. And then just before you go to bed, look at it again for 10, 15 minutes. Usually what happens the next morning, you figure it out pretty quickly. Well, I appreciate you coming on the stream. I appreciate it, man. I'm having audio issues. Sorry about that. Is it common for web developers, SWEs, to work for marketing agencies? Yeah, yeah, no question about that. Uh, I don't know. When I need money, I take them under my mattress. <laughs> there you go. All right, guys. If there isn't anything else... I appreciate you joining the stream, and um, we will uh, see you in the next one. So what's this? What is Django's main speciality compared to PHP? What, what one should use for what? Ah, well, generally speaking, you know, they both compete against each other. Django versus, not PHP, but Laravel. They're both frameworks. Django uses Python. Laravel uses PHP. If I was doing pure web app, I always lean towards PHP Laravel. I think it's the, the bee's knees. I think it's the best one overall. But you can build great apps, whether it be with Django, uh, Laravel, uh, Spring, uh, you know, pick, pick your framework, Express, you know, they're all pretty good. All right, guys, that's about it. I'm getting tired here. I got to go get a drink of water. And... <laughs> Is Flutter better than Ruby? <laughs> All right, guys. 
We'll talk soon. Thanks for joining the stream. I'll leave you with some ASMR from uh, Maine, which is the ocean. Uh, uh, I'll ask her one last question here. Firebase or do-it-yourself solution to push notifications. P.S. No stranger when it comes to backend and making APIs. Bah. Launch the product with Firebase. If unless you know, if you do your own solution, if it if it's taking uh, too much time. And you can just implement it in Firebase like this. Launch the app quick with Firebase, and if it starts to really grow, then you can roll out your own custom solution if you ever feel a need. See you, Brandon. Thanks for joining. See you guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for joining the stream, and uh, we shall talk soon. We're almost at an hour, so too long. All right, so I'm going to go to my uh, ASMR video in uh, Cape Elizabeth, Maine, Ocean View. If you're feeling stressed out, this is going to relax you. Thanks for joining.